Welcome back, everyone. Uh, so we are back for match number 10. Match number 10, yes. Uh, I think I did update it. So, so yeah, match number 10. And it's uh, the start of the mini match between um, Daniel Berish and Watu Kobese. So these guys have had a, a bit of a rough time in the event. Uh, Watu is on one out of four and Daniel is on zero out of four. So they will be battling it out to get to number three, the number three spot. Um, so so Paris is going to have to get uh, one and a half from these two games. And Watu only needs one point um, to secure third spot. So welcome to Megan again. Um, She's uh, joined us in the previous match, so welcome, Megan. And uh, yeah, welcome to Daniel and Watu as well. So this was the last position we saw uh, from the game between Henry and Craig. Uh, Henry again coming up with some beautiful finishes, uh, beautiful tactics, sacking both dragon bishops to, to find this, and king c4, rook d4 would be made. But um, okay, let's repack the board, or re let's set up the, the clock. And then I'm going to ask my uh, the tournament organizer, Lorenzo, to just randomize a position for us. Okay, guys, so there you have it. Uh, just to confirm with the players, you haven't played this before, right? No, but in, so. in this variant, it doesn't matter, Kelvin. Yeah, yeah, just, just checking. We just don't want the same. <laughs> for the players but yeah um okay so interesting start close to normal but the knights are on one side and the dragon bishops on the other side so daniel's got the white pieces what has got the black pieces 15 minutes aside with a 15 second increment everyone so players if you are ready you can mute yourselves and daniel you can start whenever you are ready good luck So yeah, this is uh, the business end of the, the event. Um, Daniel starts off with his uh, traditional D4. And um, yeah, I, I will just update the totals for everybody. But you can see the the, the, the scores that, uh, that has happened. Um, Craig uh, experiencing his first loss of the event. Thank you to the Grimo for uh, following. Welcome to the show. Uh, Henry coming up with a vital win there against Craig in that their mini match there in the two leaders. But Henry has taken now a, a point lead and Craig is forced to to win the last game. He's got the white pieces though, um, just to equalize and go into a tie break or a playoff for uh, first place. These two have got their own battle here. Like I said, Watu needs to win one game and then he's secured third spot. Um, nerves. Uh, Megan, what do you do to handle them? I don't know if there's a little bit of pressure, you know, you, you have to, you have to really come up with something. I mean, Daniel has the white pieces, so he has a slight advantage. So hopefully he can pull through a draw, even a win, you know, just so that to secure that third spot. So it should be a very interesting game. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I think uh, Daniel has to get something from this game. Uh, like I said, uh, he needs one and a half. So. Even a draw can still happen, but Iwan uh, just uh, has to think that he feels forced to win here, especially because he's got the white pieces. Um, but yeah, um, the Grimo says, I drink. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome to the show, the Grimo. Um, and uh, here comes the mighty H pawn, H4. And uh, yeah, Daniel is wanting to march up with h5 and maybe even h6 okay i think it's time to take off the headset again okay so c6 was played so some symmetry on the queen side. Both players want their dragon bishops to be open. And Daniel doesn't go for h5. He first develops. So complete symmetry except for white choosing h4. Is Watu going to play h5? Or is he going to say that nope, he's, he wasn't scared of h5 in the first place. He's just going to continue. I see what you mean when you say that... Um... 
position similar to the classical position is easier to play. I remember a game, I think it was, was it Laden, when the queens were on g8. So then it's quite tricky to, you know, how do you place your pieces, but when it's closer to the classical position, it's, it's more comfortable. Yes, indeed. So, um, as you can see, what you're going into, uh, uh, analysis mode over there. Um, and all the players have their ways of, of going in deep. Daniel looking slightly more relaxed, but he is uh, also calculating. But yeah, it does seem like a position closer to home. So the players are not, they've whipped out a couple of moves already. The only foreign move here is h4. And uh, it would be interesting to see what Watu does. Watu is the one that likes to push the h pawn and attack. So does he play h5 to neutralize? Does he play e5? But e5 and then h5 would kick the knight. Both players want to break with e4 or e5. Interesting. Whoa, knight f4 and king f1. Do you think that was a mouse slip or do you think it was king f1? Yeah, I think it's definitely not a mouse slip. It's definitely the move you wanted to play. <laughs> he doesn't want to castle with the pawn on h4. Actually, I had a game like this against Watu as well in the Paradigm Chess 30 uh, first unofficial tournament. And um, sometimes it's not bad. The knight can get kicked later with e3 and then white can play e4 again or the rook on h1 is still useful for h5 the king is okay on f1 so i like it it's gonna be entertaining Bungie says h5 knight g4 for black okay interesting Daniel still on the starting time, 15 minutes and 10 seconds, almost the starting time. What to using a bit of time. It would be interesting if Daniel wins this game because then it will be a final showdown between these two for third and fourth. Do you think it's difficult to formulate a plan when it comes to Paradigm Chess 30? Um, yes. It's just getting hold of th these dynamics. I mean, a lot of times I miss the dynamics. Um, and sometimes you are allowed to do things that you're not allowed to do in normal chess sometimes. Be more aggressive than usual play king f1 like in a normal chess game i would consider white being very bad with the king on f1 and so on but in this type of game there's still more life to it so mm. so it's difficult to grasp everything yeah more experience more tournaments will show us the way but definitely uh stimulating it's giving our brains more uh to think about Bungie was suggesting knight e5. There e4 comes up. Knight e5. So putting the knight in a nice central square looked good, but Daniel says I'm gonna break first. Maybe he's thinking of after pawn takes, knight takes e4 to play g3 and kick the knight. Daniel gets his knight on e4. Okay, so, oh, um, yeah, Earl also says he likes knight e5. Welcome, Earl. And the Grimo says, this is all new to me. What are the differences between this and Fisher Random? So, Fisher Random, and this is very similar because the, piece, the pieces are jumbled up at the beginning of the game. But in this case, you can, if you notice that the, the, the bishops are red. 
so they are not normal bishops they are dragon bishops so they are special pieces developed by uh, Lorenzo van Niekerk and Craig Willenberg uh, it is uh, called dragon bishops because they can move like bishops and they can kind of move like knights uh, I say kind of move like knights because when you see them move like a knight it will look like he moves like a knight but it actually moves like a Chinese chess knight in other words it has to move in first square he moves is straight and then one diagonally but he can't jump over stuff so the dragon bishop on b1 for white cannot go to a3 because the pawn on b2 is in the way he cannot go to d2 either because the dragon on c1 is in the way um but the dragon bishop for white on c1 can go to b3 because the c2 square is available so one straight one diagonally always straight first and they can't jump over stuff so that's the the big difference uh, the grimo uh, you can also go onto youtube uh, search calvin class and chess my my youtube channel and you can find a couple of videos on pc30 some introductory video explaining everything and a couple of videos from daniel barish himself showing one of his games in a previous event and uh i am uh, steel henry steel also showing on a different episode so go check that out and also like the facebook page paradigm chess 30 you'll find more information and uh, updates there as well dragon to d6 on the board dragon c to d6 so what do wants to exchange a pair of dragons yes that's right lorenzo has uh, come a long way with uh, his development of something uh, more uh, attacking less draws and so on he has organized a lot of mrl paradigm chess tournaments uh, and the idea was to not allow so many draws and um, to make it more exciting so this is basically um a continuation of the growth of the game coming from the uh lorenzo's mrl mrl paradigm tournaments and uh they've recently uh created this dragon bishop so they, it's all uh together part of uh the growth of this game coming from lorenzo Lor the lorenzo funny character organizer of the tournament so yeah less theory yes a lot less theory we are quite new to this and a lot more tactics so it's sharpness if you love attacking if you love initiative this is the game you should play and you don't need a different board you only need a normal chess board guys that's the beauty of it it seems like black wants to exchange majority of the pieces and maybe going to an in game seems like it but you may be saying that um He's got a better position with the king on f1 and he wants to swap off a couple of pieces seems like that uh megan um so earl is asking where can you play this variant we we left the link on the on the last session i just want to see if it's still there maybe i can find it and repost it for you am i sorry Cal, am i missing something whoa what was that what? okay dragon bishop and knight versus queen ah why okay this why did want to give that up i like that for white oh but there's a check interesting stuff Oh, also, I think white is threatening. Oh, but black and still castle. But um, white is maybe threatening dragon to c7. Check. Oh, but it's not a knight fork then. Dragon fork. Uh, yeah, it will be checked. But the, the pawn on c6 in the, is in the way. And, and yeah. the pawn on b7 is in the way, yeah. So, but um, interesting stuff here. B2 is hanging, but uh, Daniel still has his dragon bishop. It should be entertaining. Dragon bishop and knight um yeah if um if Bungie is watching can you just repost that link for for Earl we we will post the link uh, either now or but later Earl 
and then you can use that link to play it so we don't have a full website yet but we've got the, the demo version that we are using thanks Bungie so Earl there is the link and you can use that link to play if you want to play against someone from uh, another side of town you're going to have to uh, download the app um, any disk just to connect them to your computer as well and then you guys can play it on there otherwise if your friend is right next to you uh, then you can just use the link to play so what was the last move castles so what to uh, not taking on b2 Barish defending the pawn on b2 and this is a very interesting battle yeah i don't know since i'm quite new to this paradigm 30 i'll be a bit skeptical about having the exchange dragon and knight versus queen so i, I don't know how do you feel about it it looks exciting um i think uh someone in the chat who was it booba abc said oh Bungie said dragon h5 but i think h5 was protected i believe i think so mm, by the queen uh queen f5 eating the rook as well dragon to d2 protecting the rook dragon uh, bishop doing a lot rook d8 but yeah i think it's a it's a good um exchange for white i i think mm -hmm. but um you don't know i actually don't know we'll see now this is going to be a nice example to see what is actually better i would take the dragon bishop and the knight but uh yeah maybe maybe what will prove us I'll prove myself wrong. Uba ABC says definitely better, Maggie. Dragon and Knight versus Queen. Oh, I like that analogy. Dragon and Bishop, um, Knight and Bishop versus Rook. Okay, so that's uh, the concept that is with dragon and knight versus queen similar i think yeah idea of the two pieces are both worse than the queen but together two big pieces fighting against one the queen might have it a, a bit difficult to contain them so what is desperately trying to use his queen to to harass white a2 is uh, hanging now. But white seems quite solid in the center with his uh, dragon and knight. What is the time like? Okay, both players still have a lot of time. And this is actually one of the, maybe the first time that Daniel just clearly looks better here. Okay, I like Watu's next move. He's trying to arrest that, that dragon. Imagine he takes the dragon and then for, for the for his rook and then you would have a queen for a rook and a knight. So that's an exchange he definitely white can't allow. So this is a, a knight fork, a dragon fork, right? in the situation if the dragon stands on f4 yes daniel is hesitating and going forward eventually so yeah that's a dragon bishop fork so there you have it guys it seems like a, a knight uh fork because there's no pawns or anything in the way notice the queen moved from e6 to f5 so the dragon bishop on f5 cannot reach e6 anymore because the mm -hmm. queen is in the way on f5 so that's the point the dragon bishop also worth more than the rook because of its strength so that's why daniel probably won't take the rook on d3 uh, buba abc said um queen e4 was strong i think you went queen f5 because then the h pawn is hanging if i'm not mistaken oh so it's like a family so, fork ah, so dragon to h5 would be possible yeah so the dragon bishop on f4 was also attacking h5 yeah interesting perhaps yeah maybe that was it Bungie says dragon g3 protecting and attacking yeah and what to feeling a bit of uh, pressure there 
again going into into analysis mode over there. Booba IBC says King G3. King G3. <laughs> okay. Maybe asking the king a bit too much over there. Banji says Dragon G3 and then Knight E5 also seems cool. Oh, dragon e5, isn't there just rook takes f3? No, then dragon takes rook. Oh, right, right. I also think maybe um, not he wanted to block that attack against the c4 pawn. I'm not sure. Maybe. You know, you don't want to lose a little bit of material for this exchange. I wasn't worried about the pawn, though. I would, I would, but it's true what you're saying, but I would maybe think about getting my rooks in the game. I would allow my opponent to take c5 and go rook ad1, but it might come back to bite me. Maybe... Daniel wants to keep that C pawn. Oops. Double up makes sense. Oh no. I was thinking um dragon d4, but obviously you just exchange then. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe rook f rook h e1. White needs to get the rooks into yeah. the game. Knight d4 coming up from Bungie. Knight d4 can be a bit nasty. Cutting out uh, uh, the connection from the two rooks. The queen will have to keep on defending the rook. So she'll have to stay on the diagonal. Maybe queen h7 then only move. So it's still a bit of work left here for Daniel to realize his slight advantage. Watu has maximized his, his own pieces and it's heavy pieces. It's a queen and two rooks. So you can't just easily... I think Daniel would love to swap off the rooks, especially because his rooks are not active right now. Rook to d5, again, threatening the dragon. Okay, so now maybe dragon to g3. Dragon to g3, hitting the queen. Queen maybe g6 or something. No, queen g6, knight d5. And then knight d4. Or knight d4, yeah, but... But then, I don't know if, if Daniel wants that c pawn to go, though, but I mean, it's a double pawn, but, you know, trying to get your pieces into the game. Yeah, and Dragon and, G3 does win a tempo. Yeah, and that E7 pawn mm -hmm. is also nying in. And he's still keeping an I and H5 pawn. So yeah, that's good. Dragon G3. Um, Like I said, Queen G6 would be a blunder because of Knight E5, the fork. But this also allows it, doesn't it? Yeah, and what to seize it. Queen D7, Knight E5. And that's a fork. Wait, sorry, I'm missing the fork. Where's the fork? Queen D7, Knight E5 e5 hitting the rook on d3 i see i see and the queen on d7 so i think what also spotted it late So it's also been, um, okay, it's been very tough on Daniel in this event, but it's also been tough on Watu. He is on one, but it's been two draws. So Watu, both of these players haven't tasted a victory yet. So, yeah. What do you think about Queen G4? Queen G4? I don't know. So if the knight moves, maybe then rook takes dragon. I, yes. I don't know. Yes. 
Queen does look uh, but menacing there. Queen g4 is definitely possible. Oh, but then still knight is a knight e5. Another fork. But still oh, you can. Oh yeah, I see. Sorry. You can still take the knight and if the dragon moves and queen takes pawn check. The queen was aggressive on, on g4. Kind of like that g4. But queen f6 also still keeps an eye mm -hmm. on it I think. But definitely queen g4 another option. So what are we going to see here? Um, rook e5. Remember, we want to swap of rooks. Yeah. Rook e5. If rook takes knight. Then oh. rook takes rook. Rook takes, takes dragon. dragon. Pawn takes. And then we've got two, two rooks, rooks for the queen. queen. Is not bad, but yeah. the double pawns don't look good. I don't know if king takes is possible. King takes doesn't look that nice with the open king. But if it's possible, maybe. But I think Daniel will be giving up some of his advantage mm -hmm. like that, so maybe not necessary. Rook e4, I guess. But then rook takes c. Okay, queen f6 also defended the e7 pawn. Yeah. I don't know, can you really hang on to that c5 pawn though? Maybe we must let go of it because that is white's extra pawn anyway. Give up the pawn just to activate all your pieces. Mm -hmm. Rook e4, rook takes pawn, double up on the e file. And then we're playing after e6 then you can go knight to e5 or something the dragon is still has a lot of potential so yeah and also if black goes for that c5 pawn wouldn't rook b to d1 just play be played you know That's trying also... to take away the double up on the file yes So big question is what to do though, because if you lift up your rook, then rook takes pawn, then rook d1 is not possible. Rook e5 played, so Daniel is maybe trying to go into this double rook end game versus the queen rook takes knight you have to play rook takes d5 rook takes dragon king takes yeah, but then there's queen g6 check picking up the yeah you he's gonna have to play pawn takes. takes but then black has this extra pawn in the center Yeah, I don't think it would be that bad though, you know, two rooks versus a queen. Yeah, and the, he's got his extra pawns on the queen yeah. side. It's just not as clear as I think white would have wanted it, but at least equal for Daniel. And let's see if Watu goes in for this normal chess position. I don't think there's anything else besides rook takes f3. You know, Watu doesn't want that passive position. He's thinking of e6. Uh, Buba ABC says uh, you should have just pushed on the queen side with b4 perhaps. Is uh, c3 not hanging? Maybe after takes on c3 then rook a d1. Instead of rook e5, b4 was also an idea, yes. We were looking for a type of waiting move. Anji was saying rook e5, rook e4 instead. Yeah, I like to also rook e4. Yeah, black won't play rook takes rook because of dragon takes. Then it's yes. a double attack. Yes. Yeah. But okay, black can still go queen f5 or something protect. That's we saw that scenario earlier, but I think the initiative or or there's just a hold is gonna disappear. So Watu is now contemplating probably on this queen versus two rooks. But it's probably going to be an agonizing one because that past e pawn is not going to go far. And the winning chances in that end game doesn't look like a lot for black. Looks more like a drawish or winning for white scenario. Okay, but now what if black just leaves the... Yeah. 
like if if black just ignores the option of the exchanges and do what maybe e6 or something yeah i think he, he's thinking of e6 he's definitely thinking of e6 what is what you might be worried about after e6 at least then he's gonna swap of one rook no but if e6 then what about the rook takes h5 Five. the dragon um, bishop is protecting yes. it so i think you were forced to take yeah that would be a possibility so here it happens the exchanges that daniel wanted queen f5 probably mm. threatening rook takes knight aha uh -huh. Aha, uh -huh. the rook on b1 is kind of hanging. Rook takes f3 is a big threat, removing the defender from the dragon on e5. Okay, Watto has decided to give Daniel this tactical problem. And Bungie has spotted a nice move, very natural. Rook e1 just defending the dragon and getting the rook out of arm's way. Seems logical. And Daniel spots it. Still holding on to the rook though. Yep, there we go. Again, what are using the d5 square, rook d5. Still wants to grab that c5 pawn, threatening rook takes dragon. Yeah, I think dragon can just drop back to d4. Drop back to d4, rook takes dragon. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so that the rook is forever wanting to take that dragon bishop. Dragon back to g3. The dragon on g3 is not so happy, but maybe safest there. Hitting the queen again. e7 also hanging. It's looking good for white, I think. I say white can now go knight d4 and then maybe start pushing the pawns on the queen side. Knight to d4. No, but then rook takes c5. Mm. Mm. Banji, but that's a, that's a good idea to use your pawns. Ah, but b4 is now not so possible. That's why I want to put the mm. queen on f6. Because yeah. of c3. Mm. Another... And Daniel using this e5 square very nicely. I like it. Rook to e5 and this method... I mentioned that the rooks must come off and Daniel has uh, listened to the commentators here. Yeah, rook takes is forced or because of the h5 pawn hanging. Yes. So rook takes, dragon takes, he's going to come back. Centralize the dragon. And here we have it, guys. You were wondering what's better, the dragon and the knight or the queen, here we have a nice example. Who is it going to be? So the queen is going to, going to try to be as, um, as annoying as possible. Yeah, I think queen e2 is being, okay, well, queen takes a2, but also queen e2. Queen e2 also. The f2 pawn and the b2 pawn. Ah, okay. Yes. What to a bit down on the clock here, yeah, 3 minutes 47 seconds. Daniel on 8.5 minutes. <clears throat> B4, Bungie wants to get B4 in. B4 makes sense, yeah. Okay, we can afford to give up the 8 pawn, I guess. But still, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be so easy to coordinate, um... And what to place the move that you expected. Nice. Queen e2, b2 and f2 hanging. 
I would have much rather given up the A pawn than the B pawn or the F pawn. The F mm. pawn has a bit of, uh, it covers the, the king. Can you do without it? Probably you can. Um, Banji says still B4. Yeah, I B4 don't think you'd want to let the B pawn go now of all times because then you have three hanging pawns or three island pawns. Yeah. So B4 just keeping your yeah. extra two pawns on the queen side saying that I still have enough cover on, around my king with the knight and the dragon and the two pawns and I want to start pushing my queen side pawns. Huba ABC suggests C6. Pushing forward and if takes then dragon takes C6. C6 being mm -hmm. played. Yes. And after takes, perhaps white can takes, and now he is forking a, a, a nice dragon fork on a7, e7. Of course, e7 is still protected by the queen, but now it's not so easy for the queen to move, even though taking on e7 isn't check. But what about now queen takes b2? Now you're like kind of this coordinating yes. the queen side points. Oh, I would take on b2. Yeah. I would take on b2. Maybe c6 is a bit of a rush. I liked pawn to b4 and after yeah. queen takes f2, then c6. <coughs> queen b2 played. Maybe this time what you listen to the commentators. Um, 0 0.95, Bungie giving his own evaluation over there. <laughs> Slightly better for white. Uh, welcome ACL Chess. C6 was hurried. I agree with that one. I feel like B4 and then C6 was the idea. Um, yes, uh, Uber ABC says uh, Bungie Engine 2.0. Daniel grabbing the last queenside pawn for black. Which pawn to take for what to? It takes on c3, it looks. Okay, now it's just... Hesitating? Mm. Which one will you take? Hmm. If you take on c3, how do you defend? I White's gonna go a4 and dragon b5. Oh, I was just thinking dragon b5. Hmm. Attacking the queen and protecting. So he takes the a1 instead. He can go dragon b5 again, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you don't want the outside boss pawn. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, ACL chess also saying you always take the furthest. So that is the side one. So what to sticking to that eventually? Dragon B5 on the cards, yeah. Defending the C3 pawn and C4 up next. There's no check on d6. The dragon is covering that square as well. But Daniel hesitating a bit. What else? Dragon to d4? I was thinking dragon b5 and then you can just push up to c4. There's no way that anything bad can happen from that. Yeah, but the question is how do you carry on after that? I think that's the main thing now. Because if the queen... Imagine the queen stands on c5. How are we going to push the pawn? The knight's going to have to move and then... Mm -mm -mm. I think the knight has to move and you play g3 or something. The king will have to... Will have to be safe. So, Daniel, rather going for this, I've got a feeling this might be better. If you can push c4, and we get c5 in as well. But the black queen needs to cover the c4 square. So, queen b3 or queen a4 now. No, queen b3 is a blunder. Queen b3. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dragon yeah. takes. <laughs> but maybe queen a4 then. Or queen a2. And... What about queen d6 check? Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, kind of just bringing your queen closer. Then maybe queen f4, so your pawn can't be pushed. I guess oh, no, it can be. 
I guess that was the idea, but after queen d6, dragon e5 would oh, block, block it. and attack. Mm -hmm. So that's why f6. Maybe queen d6 is a possibility. Maybe e5 is his idea as well. I don't know. The more I look at this, might be equal. Because it's, it's, there's definitely some problems for, for white to realize an advantage if he has. What happens now if c4? c4. Is that a bit too rash? I like c4. I feel past pawns have to be pushed, so... And the dragon can always drop back to e3 to defend. Oh, there yep, we go. c4 coming. Or you can even go drag... Oh, no, it won't be checked then. I was thinking dragon e6. Dragon e6 is No, it is checked. It is checked. Check. King of 8 probably. Dragon e6 looks cool because you you then putting a wedge in that pawn structure. Obviously, black wants to go e5 and limit the white pieces more. The dragon e3 is also an interesting idea by Bungie. Uh, setting up a trap. If dragon e3, then queen takes c3 would be a blunder because of dragon d5 check and picking up the queen. Oh, wow. Sharp but tactics. <laughs> What do, obviously, if he doesn't take it, what do we do? Still C4 anyway? So neat trick there, that. Um, ACL chess suggests you can start with queen D6 now, perhaps. So pawn to C4 played. I don't know, I like dragon E6, you know, just to prevent that E5 pawn from being pushed. Yeah. But that check on d6 afterwards wouldn't it be dangerous for the dragon. Imagine the dragon being on e6 now. Oh, check. Oh, yeah. Of yeah. course, black yeah. would first move his king, but maybe that's something. Right now, the dragon is protected. Mm -mm -mm. On e6, it might be undefended with some tactical possibilities. So, ACL chess spots it. Queen d6 check first. Is he going to go e5 after that? I think white is still pretty much fine. g3, e5, dragon to e3. But what is going to try to cook up some, some counterplay with e5 and f5? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he has to. Otherwise, if in a free world for white, if he had, didn't have a king, he could then move around his knight to the other side yeah. and try to push the pawn through. But his king's safety will be an issue. Maybe dragon b5. Oh, you can't. Sorry. Yeah, the pawn is in the way in this case. But I think that Daniel has to still control the dark squares. Because the pawn is on the light square. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Bungie was saying c5 immediately. Ah. I don't. No, oh, oh. C5, queen takes dragon, knight takes, pawn takes. No, white pawns are the check. And the pawn. Ah, yes. That was also interesting, uh, Bungie. C5, the queen will have to move, and then dragon e3, perhaps. Or dragon e6 check. I think c5 was quite nice. Mm. Because there could be some issues. If c5, then queen c7, dragon e6 is another fork. Dragon fork. So where would the queen have to go? Queen d8 still, dragon e6 fork. Whoa, that c6 move looks very strong. And yeah, you see what those uh, awareness of that dragon bishop. The e Puts the king in the corner. He's afraid of these dragon tactics that we have just started seeing. The dragon is very dangerous towards an open king. Ah, ACL says c5 would be a mistake after queen d5 hitting the knight as well that is hanging. Perhaps that would be... The refutation. C5, Queen C6. Now is it time to get the knight in the game? Yeah, I don't think King G2. Maybe. Oh, King G2 putting the knight. No. Yeah. This Rather was... move the knight, yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, I don't think it's fatal though, but you don't want to pen that guy. Knight d2 or knight e1?
We want to kick the queen. Patao. <coughs> Knight into play, where's the knight going? C4. Hmm. B3 now. Yeah, I think maybe knight E1 so that you could have gone to D3 maybe. Uh -huh. Oh, but it's already late, but. Yeah. Mm. Want to finally play F5, the move that I anticipated to create counterplay. Yeah, you don't want to take obviously because then your C pawn goes. Yeah. But maybe. Maybe that could be torture though. <clears throat> because this f4 move that black is threatening sometimes just to open up the king could be dangerous and if you take on f5 and queen takes c5 and just put your dragon back on e3 that e5 pawn could be weak mm -mm. and um, it could be it's a very safe way for daniel for instance if daniel takes there and comes back i don't think he can lose the game anymore because there's no way for black to get in there's no pawn break so I think that's a very safe way. ACL uh, and Banji was saying knight e1, queen e4 dominates the knight. Aha. Knight e1, queen e4 would dominate the knight. Mm -hmm. But knight c2 though is still possible because the dragon on e3 would be defending it. So I don't know how much it would be dominating. And of course, yeah, what he wants to win. He's taking risks with f5. I feel like it's almost forced because you need to keep white busy. I don't see an easy way for white to push that c pawn. I would grab the e f pawn. I think so too. And then like you see, just drop your bishop, your dragon back. And then start, at, start looking at ways to attack that e5 pawn. You could try to maneuver your knight to g5. Why not just go knight c4? After, so yeah, dragon knight, takes, yes. queen takes, dragon drops back, threatening knight c4. Knight c4, but are we going to apply more pressure to that pawn? <coughs> ah, um, Banji is saying, I think it's dragon f5 that it means, yeah, dragon f5, queen takes c5, and then knight e4. Planting the knight on e4, rather, attacking the queen, protecting f2. That seems quite decent. Yeah. And Daniel does that. He takes on f5. Daniel is down to 52 seconds though. Queen takes c5. Is he going to play dragon e3? Is he going to go knight e4? I like knight e4 suggested by Bungie. Yeah. Knight blocks the pawn. Blocks the Makes pawn. Sense. Can go to g5 as well. And maybe eventually White's going to have to push g4 himself. If he wants to push for the one. What about, oh no, it won't be check, dragon g6, but you're attacking the pawn though on h. On h, yes, but queen takes f2, check, that's maybe something you don't want to allow. Daniel instead puts the dragon on e4, the, the dragon and the knight are protecting each other, and the dragon is defending f2. But that's where is is a bit soft, yeah, the, 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 does seem like the dragon wants to go into that direction, Megan. So, but Daniel playing very... Solid here, just regrouping his pieces. He's probably gonna wait for the right moment here too. He can even play dragon f3, then knight e4 back. Mm -hmm. And I think this is slight torture for what to here. He knows he doesn't have anything. If Daniel wants to draw, he's gonna get it. But the question is, how much is Daniel gonna push? Remember, he is a point behind what to so, and he's he's gonna play black after this against what to. Dragon f3, eyeing the h5 pawn, but still he needs to defend the knight on d2. So maybe knight e4, knight g5 next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the queen can't go that far because he has to protect the e pawn. Mm. Queen can't do anything to white, and the queen, and he doesn't have pawn breaks. So yeah, why well, took all of Black's play away? Yeah.
I would play knight f1 quickly. Okay, knight e4 also looks good. Maybe I'm just being a biggie. Too cheap here. Yeah. Knight mm -hmm. f1 would threaten knight, but dragon takes dragon takes e5. But knight e4, the solid choice. Beautiful knight. Knight's going to g5. And what to has to do? Nothing but wait. Yeah, knight g5 looks nice to play. Ooh, nice. Knight g5 and the e5 pawn is gonna hang. And the h5. Because even if the queen protects e5, dragon takes knight. e5, queen takes. Check. Knight f7. <laughs> or you could check with the knight immediately and mm. take so. I think Daniel is grinding this one out here. Okay, now I can confirmly say that I do like the two pieces against the queen. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. It does seem to me that the two pieces are tagging up here against the queen. And Daniel getting himself ready <laughs> for victory. Still some work left. And yeah, guys, if there's a tie break for positions, we all, I think there's tie breaks for all positions. If there's a tie, then first tie break is amount of wins, and most wins, and then the second tie break is direct encounter. So if Daniel wins this one, they will be on the same score. And then in, in fact, Daniel just needs a draw from the last game. Even though their scores would be the same, he would take third spot because he will then have more wins. Mm -hmm. Because Watu does not have any wins yet, just two draws. So this is an important game. Will Daniel be able to show us good dragon technique? Queen f5. Are we going to see dragon takes e5 or dragon takes h5? I would say e5. Why e5? Because I mean, queen takes, and then you still have that check. Yeah, but he's not going to give up his queen. So maybe what Daniel is saying, the e5 pawn is still weak. I took there, now you have two pawn islands instead I of taking on e5 mm -hmm. and then this. So spotting something better than what we saw, that was exciting too. I would have also think to take on, on e5 would be nice. But Daniel is going to come around and... And round mm. up the e pawn now. Yeah, the pawn can't go too far. <clears throat> yeah, funny. Bungie saying two knights and bishop. So the bishop feels like a bishop and the dragon. Bishop feels like a knight and a bishop. Especially with this open board, it was almost got the full scope of a knight. Against the queen. <clears throat> and white wants to collect that last pawn now. And it's going to be... Very tough. <clears throat> uh, welcome, Rendon Yamande. He says, uh, Dragon to F7. Instead of Dragon back was interesting, yes. But it wouldn't have been checked, though, because the G7 pawn is in the way. So remember the Dragon Bishop... Can move like a knight only uh, if there's not something in the way so it's first a straight movement and then diagonally so it won't be checked because the g7 pawn is in the way <clears throat> i think black's best option would be okay i was thinking keeping the queen on the e file trying to push that e3 pawn just yeah. to exchange it because now yeah. you can't defend it after dragon if c3 or even c2, c2. yeah I, I like dragon c2 even if you put Put the queen on e file because it also covers the e three square. Oh wow! Okay. So, I think the e pawn is dropping. Mm -mm. I think this is gonna be over. Um, thank you to Ghosty B one for following. Welcome to the show. We are close to the end of this game. Um, D V two, C two. Yeah, dragon to C two. Yes, we are moving with dragon bishops. Thank you to Buns. Uh, 6H4M. Is it uh, 6 o'clock? Four <laughs> minutes past six. <laughs> so, so guys, if you are new to this, uh, you can go on the, uh, my YouTube channel, Calvin Class and Chess. And there's three uh, Paradigm Chess 30 videos one introductory one, and two where players are showing games. You can check it out there. 
but essentially the dragon bishop the the bishop that is glowing already moves like a bishop and like a knight uh 90 percent like a knight he can't jump over pawns he always moves in a straight direction and then diagonally one straight and uh one diagonally or he can move like a bishop <clears throat> 4 a.m. over there. Where are you uh, watching uh, Ben's uh, 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 6 h 4 m Bingham. Bingham. Okay, Bingham. Let's go with that. <laughs> so where is it 4 a.m.? Port of Los Angeles. Aha. Interesting. We've got Los Angeles in the house. Welcome, guys. Aha, you got it right. I need to go for lessons, guys. <laughs> Bingham. So the knight and the dragon bishop are even chasing the queen around here. So it's going to take a bit of time. Daniel needs to just eventually push his extra pawns up. Yeah. And once one of those pawns get close to the black king, then those the trio of the pawn, dragon bishop and knight is actually going to become fatal. All that he needs to just make sure is that he doesn't allow any funky checks or or harassment from the black queen to his own king. Was it yesterday when there was the first draw that had um, come from the Paradigm 30 through repetition? Yeah, there were. I think there were two draws, or was it was oh. there one happened today? I think one happened today. Is it? Mm. I'm not sure actually. No, it was yesterday two draws. There was two draws in the event. Oh, but draws can't be offered, right? It, no. it has to be through repetition. It has or... to be played. No offer of draws. You have to play it out. Um, and the Grimo says he's from Mannenberg. Mannenberg also in the house. Welcome. Um, uh, the plan is to bring the game to the masses. So we need to just uh, make it bigger, make it more well known. Uh, the more of you that want to play, do we are uh, busy. Uh, developing uh, uh, it more and more so for now we only have the link uh, Bungie um, has posted the link but um, we will try to to further this development and eventually get a platform where everybody can play but the link was posted a couple of times we will post it again before the end of the today's uh, show uh, and uh, then you can use the link it's a demo um, links that you can use to 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 play and practice on um knight g6 check knight g6 check king h7 it's getting scary now mm. uh bingham says chess has been around for a while it would be with the masses if they wanted it um yeah, this is a new variant though, so you can't play this on any website, uh, but you can use the physical board and play it out. If you know how the dragon bishop moves, uh, once again, you can check out the tutorial uh, show on my YouTube channel, Calvin Class and Chess. You can search it over there. Then you can, that's a nice thing about this variant, you can actually play it on a normal chess board with all the normal pieces. Um, yeah, ACL saying one this morning, the link was posted, but uh, thanks, Bungie, for posting it again. Um, and yeah, Bungie also saying it only draws with repetition um, checks and repetitions and so on, no draw offers. Um, Earl says, would dragon, bishop, plus king be able to force a mating pattern? <clears throat> I think so. I think there's a mating possibility with the king and the dragon, bishop against the king. I think that is definitely possible. Um, ACL Chess says, uh, Queen C4 was a blunder. Dragon F7. But it's not check though. Mm. Guys, if you're watching the show and you, you also want to join in the chat, just remember to press the follow button. And then you can join us in the chat. If you can't press the follow button, just make sure to sign up to Twitch. Uh, it's for free, it's easy, it's quick. Go to the home page, or I think at the top of the page, if you haven't uh, signed up, there should be a sign up button. Just sign up, press the follow button, and you have, uh, and you can uh, join us. 
G5 played, white can n percent is what you're looking for, a stalemate or something. What happens if dragon takes G5? Dragon takes G5? Am I missing? I think he can do that. Should be over soon. Yeah, I think that G7 was a nice protection for Black's King against the Dragon Bishop. You know, you can't go to F7 or G6, it's not check. Yeah. So I don't know if G5 was the And if the Daniel takes now, now the King can still go to G7, so there's no... There's no stalemate ideas, at least. Yeah. Dragon F6, is that mate? That is, is that mate? mate? Guys, wow. there we see a mate alone with the Dragon Bishop. So you don't wow. even need a king, guys. So, wow. That's an amazing finish over there. Let's get the players on. Guys, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. What two can you hear us? Let's just wait for what two to also join us. Uh, well done on your on your first victory, Daniel, by the way. It's a nice finish <laughs> over you. there. Thank you. What two can you hear us? Yo. Okay, uh, tough luck there, what to, um, what can you guys tell us about the game? First of all, what to, uh, uh, that, um, that exchange no, of the queen. No, queen d was a blunder, I mean, I completely, yeah. I mean, I have a very okay position, but I just, I just forgot that you can play queen takes f4. I saw it after I released the move. And, uh -huh. Aha, yeah. yeah, and then it was tough with the queen versus the, uh, the the dragon yeah, and, and the, the king and the king is safe you know, so it's yeah a, yeah a very bad blunder yeah um so. megan do you perhaps have a question for for them i don't have a question but i want to say daniel well done on the game i think you demonstrated nicely how the dragon bishop and knight versus the queen should be played so well done thanks yeah that was a nice display to just see how they they fight against each other um it seemed not so easy and straightforward though thank you to regan the pro yeah, for following wasn't. by the way um a nice little stalemate trick there at the end actually i had to watch out for yeah um, so so okay i just want to ask what you how what was your feeling were you this end game is it still savable or did you just feel like you're going slowly down no i i i, I mean i misplayed it a lot also i mean with the rooks on the board i but I was I was down on time. But I think that the end game with the rooks should be fine. I should keep the rooks. Yeah, the I think Daniel did a good job of exchanging those rooks. That was no, I exchanged them. I played rook <laughs> rook rook in. Yeah, I played rook d three, rook d five, which was stupid. I should put my rooks on the d file. Yeah, and and and, and wait. But I exchanged the rooks. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to get the c five pawn, but um, I missed a few things. And yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it was tough. I okay, think. Okay. It happens in the long but run. Yeah. Not the greatest of games. Yeah. Yeah, but okay, from, from Daniel's side, I think you did a great job there converting. Um, uh, it seemed for a moment or mm. two that it was difficult, and then you, you found ways to make it more clear. And at the end, the, the less pieces on the board, just the, that dragon bishop just yeah. gets stronger and stronger. So, yeah, yeah. well done. I think, I think once the like, individual pawns so start like, slowly picking up like, the e5 pawn, the h5 pawn, the g7 pawn, I think at that point it was difficult to say. Yeah. So, okay, so um, well done, Daniel, for picking up your first win. Um, you now join Thanks. Watu on the same score. Um, so, guys, you have one more game left after the following match. Um, but uh, uh, tiebreak-wise, uh, I think that uh, now, remember, guys, I just want to remind you, the first tiebreak is uh, most wins. So, Watu, you have two draws in the event, and Daniel, you scored your first win. So, it seems like that a draw would make Daniel end on third position um, because of most wins, the first tiebreak. Second tiebreak is actually direct encounter. So so that's the situation right now. Um, but of course, colors will be reversed, everyone. So Watu will play with the white pieces. So it's bound to be an interesting finish for these two guys. Uh, next up, after a very short break, we are going to have the leaders of the event with um, Craig having the white pieces against um, Henry. And Henry scored a victory against Craig in the previous one. Um, but this time around, Craig has the white pieces, so Craig is in a must-win situation to go into a tie, into a playoff for first place. So it's going to be exciting, guys. Don't go away too far. We're going to have a short break and come back. Um, thanks, everybody, for, for tuning in the chat box as well. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, uh, People's Pats is asking, what do you guys think is your ratings in the Paradigm Chess? That I don't know about the ratings as of now. Mine's 1,200. So, <laughs> it's not very good. So, <laughs> 
so yeah we're gonna i don't know what to compare us to but in any event um mm. thanks everybody in the chat box we're gonna have to take a quick break we'll be back soon guys and by the way thanks to megan as well for joining us for making it making it uh quite entertaining as well thank you megan thank you thank you i'm actually really enjoying watching thanks. it it makes me want to play so thank you for the interesting game guys thanks everyone thanks megan thanks uh, daniel what to see you guys soon cheers everyone thanks kelvin cheers <laughs>